hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel um i'm really excited to be making this video and i don't know why i haven't made this video long before now um apart from just people asking me general questions on fitness and health i think one question in a lot of people's minds is how i got started on my fitness journey and how i've been able to remain so consistent and so motivated throughout the years so this video is just to give you a little insight on what my fitness journey um how my fitness journey has been and how i got started and also um if you are on a fitness journey if you just started your fitness journey and you are lacking some motivation or if you're thinking about starting a fitness journey and you don't have enough motivation then i really hope that this video helps helps you and just you know puts you on the right track and just show you that, you know, we're all one in the same, you know, we've all been there. We've all had our struggles. We all have our stories and it's always worth it in the end. So keep watching. I will be inserting pictures and videos of my transformation and my progress throughout the years. So you can get a visual of everything. And I know right now it's hard for a lot of us to draw our motivation because we're self isolating. We're not allowed to go out. Most of us can't get to the gyms at this time. So we need all the motivation that we can get, okay? So I'm gonna take it all the way back to when I first started. That was 2017, I was 23 years old. I just graduated from university and I didn't really have a direction. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I was, I wanted to be a fashion designer and that's what I was pursuing at the time. I had applied to many different fashion schools outside the country. So I was kind of like waiting for my admissions to come in. So I was basically doing nothing at this time. And I had a friend then who was heavily into fitness. So anytime he would come back to Nigeria, you know, we would hang out and he would take me to the gym with him not to actually train but just to like watch him train and just after that we'd go hang out later and um i remember he would always try to like encourage me to get into fitness and to start training and he would always say things like you know oh um you you're young you have a very nice body now but in a couple of years and as you're getting older your body is going to start your body you go basically you're you're getting older and the older you become you want to be fit you want to be healthy and i was really skinny like very very skinny um sometimes i don't actually believe how skinny i was until i look back at my old pictures and then i'm like oh my god like that was me <laughs> seriously so that's literally how bad I was. I was really skinny. I didn't have any curves. And I know a lot of people like to say, oh, you had good genetics, so it was easy for you to look the way that you do now. It's easy for you to get those. It was easy for me to get the gains that I've gotten now and the results that I've gotten now. But people don't understand that genetics, in as much as genetics does play a role in your progress and how your body looks and how far you can go, your genetics can only take you so far. It doesn't matter if you come from a family where everyone is overweight. That doesn't mean that you cannot get fit and look amazing. So it doesn't matter what genetics you have, you can still get fit and look great. So don't downplay hard work as a result of someone's genetics. So don't use your genetics as a way to think that, oh, I can't look like this because I have bad genes or oh she looks like this because she has good genes like yes genetic genetics does play a role in your body formation but it takes more than genetics to look good you have to work hard you have to eat right you have to be consistent to actually get the results that you want so back to my friend he would always like i said push me to get started on fitness and he will always try to like get me to see the benefits of going to the gym and training and i being very skinny would always like brush it aside because i'm like i'm literally like 50 i weigh 50 kg why am i going to the gym like do you want me to lose everything that i already have that was kind of like my mentality then but you know, um, as time went on, 
he would continue to motivate me and push me and the more i would go to the gym with him the more he would try to get me to pick up some dumbbells and get some barbells and try to get me to do a squat or do some crunches or something like that he would just always try to motivate me and that rubbed off on me you know um so that's just kind of how i picked it up and you know he would send me like instagram pages of other fitness female other female fitness gurus that were you know living outside the country like really big ones i think one was um if i could remember really well one eternity later i think one of them was um coco chanel on instagram and it's actually quite funny because now we follow each other and just a ton more um female fitness trainers like that who were really big and doing really really wonderful amazing things and he would tell me oh you should start something like this you should start up your own fitness page um and you know try and motivate other young girls like you living in nigeria to do you know the same thing that you're doing and i would all always like think like why would anybody be interested in watching me train like fitness in nigeria at that point even now as well it's not really something that people grasp it's not like entertainment or you know things like that that people are more drawn towards like i feel like fitness in nigeria is still very much overshadowed by a lot of other things so i didn't really see anyone else doing fitness especially females so i'm like why would they even be interested in me and watching me train i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> so that was literally my mentality back then but to be honest his motivation his push his direction was really what triggered a lot of the things that i do now so that was really what got me started i think it's very important to have someone or something that motivates you um whether that person is close to you or far away from you someone who challenges you to to just think outside the box and i had that i was lucky enough to have someone in my life to be that person for me because as human beings we fall into dark places we are at points in our lives where most times we don't think that we can do it so we need someone to always remind us like hey you're the shit you know i had this friend who saw something in me then that i didn't even see myself i didn't see it so it's really important to find your motivation harness it wherever it, it's from and run with it when i started i couldn't find any nigerian women who lived in nigeria um that i could look up to as my fitness inspiration because i just feel like and don't get me wrong i'm not saying that nigerians don't um, work out or don't go to the gym and you know nothing like that i'm actually very happy to see that you know people are picking it up more however i just feel like a lot of people still don't know and understand the benefits of fitness and the benefits of actually lifting weights i feel like we're still in our little shells um especially women they're still afraid to go to the gym and lift weights because of you know so many different fitness myths out there so it was even worse back then because i didn't really have anyone so i was just starting and not having that just gave me more motivation to start up my own fitness page and to be a source of inspiration to another young girl like me who was just starting out and didn't know who to look up to i wanted people to have someone close to home you know someone that they didn't have to wish one day maybe if it ever happens if i'm ever lucky i get to meet you i wanted someone that they could see at their gym you know and go oh my god i can look like this i can do this when i started i i think i was about 51 52 kilograms there about i was very very tiny like i was very very petite and i started off as a beginner just like everyone else i um I went through the whole pains, being sore for days. I couldn't climb the stairs. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't sit down properly. I went through all of that. Um, and I also went through moments of self-doubt and not being motivated enough and just not believing in myself enough. And I would always compare myself to other fitness um, Instagram models who had the perfect bodies i was like why can i not look like this like oh my god i was so hard on myself and 
it got to a point where I just gave up, you know, like I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, and it didn't even help that my gym then was like 30 minutes away from where I lived. So I was spending money that I didn't even have going to and from the gym. So that was even more like, that just took its toll on me eventually and I stopped training. And I stopped training for about two months. I literally just gave up. I was like, I am done. And I think that during this time is when I had to give myself a talk. I'm like, girl, you did not just spend all this time because I think this happened towards the end of 2017. So I had already been training for about eight, nine months. So I was telling myself that you did not spend all this time, all this money, all this effort going through all this pain to just say you're done. Like my dad would always tell me, you know, growing up, if you're not going to finish something, don't start it. So that was it. I gave myself a pep talk. I said, you need to get back into it. You need to finish what you started. And that is literally how I got myself back on my feet. So I also realized that, you know, the time that I had spent in the gym so far and just having somewhere to go as a release, it gave me a purpose and I actually enjoyed it. I let my thoughts get to me. I let my insecurities get to me and I gave up, I'm like, this this has given you something to do, so you might as well just do it. So I got back into the gym, I think this was early 2018, and all the time that I had taken off by being lazy and giving up, I wasn't making sure that I was eating as I was supposed to, and me having a very fast metabolism, I lost a lot of weight. I lost everything that I gained and I was back down to 52 kg or 51 or 53, those numbers. But I was basically back to nothing and I was at square one again. This is when I started to do some research on nutrition and I learned about calorie deficits and calorie surplus and what maintenance calories were and how your muscles needed, you know, to be needed enough fuel in order for it to grow and so this is when i started to really take my nutrition more serious and i i started adding more lean protein more um, whole foods more lean meats and this is when i started taking my whey protein so i didn't start taking protein until a year after i started training so i always advise that you understand what your fitness goal is before you start adding supplements into your training routine. So this is what I did. So it required a lot of research because I knew that I had to get back on track. I had to learn the science behind fitness and how I had to lift heavier and apply more resistance to my muscle in order for it to actually grow. My friend that you know got me into training, he was like my coach. Well, he was my coach because he taught me how to train. He taught me the basics of everything that I needed to know. He taught me all the basic compound exercises that I needed and all of that good stuff. But he was a guy and I was a girl. So guys and girls have different training patterns and we had different goals. He was more focused on, you know, the biceps, the upper body, and maybe he did like legs once a week. But I was a girl, I was really, really skinny. I wanted to put on some weight. I wanted that hourglass figure. So I had to um, do legs like two or three times a week. And in as much as I was seeing progress and growth in my thighs, because I was doing a lot of squats and um, quad dominant exercises like lunges and the leg press and the leg extension, I wasn't really seeing the growth in my glutes. You know, like all these other, it's the models that I would see and their butts are like really perky. I wanted that, but I wasn't getting it. And I was like, oh my goodness, what am I doing wrong? So I had to do my own research again. And I went on other Instagram pages of females who were mostly focused on glute growth. And I tried to mimic a lot of their workouts. So um, that's when I learned about glute isolation. So I did my research. What is glute isolation? What exercises are these? Help me, I don't know what is this. 
Um, so that is when I found out exercises that I had to do to only target my glutes. So that's when I started incorporating hip, hip thrusts, kickbacks, and things like that, that only focus on my glutes. And that's when I began to see the difference. Like my glutes started growing. So I went online and I did my fitness course and I got my certification and I was like, that's it, you're in it now. There's no going back, you're taking this seriously. So I took my fitness content more serious and that's when I started selling like meal plans to people and program guides. This was like a year before I even started my online challenges. So this was like an introduction into the business aspects of what I was doing. So I just um, started taking it more seriously. I started being more consistent in the gym. My workouts, I made sure that I was maximizing my training. I made sure that I was increasing my sets, my reps, my weights, and just being more consistent. And that's when I truly began to see the results that I wanted to see. I was glad I was making progress, you know, with my Instagram page. Um, some videos would only get like 100 views, maybe 20 likes, and sometimes that would kind of like discourage me, like, am I, what am I doing wrong? However, I had to remind myself that I'm not doing this for the views, I'm not doing it for the likes, I'm doing it because I actually have a passion for what I do. And the more consistent that I was, um, the more people began to take notice. Like I said, at this time, I started selling my meal plans and program guides to people. People would just reach out to me on Instagram and ask me like, what do I eat? And I would just like draft out like a, a nutrition plan and give to them or a program guide and give it to them. I was not working. Um, I've actually never worked a nine to five a day in my life. So this was like the first experience of making my own money. And it was through just selling what I did. Just looking at myself in the mirror and looking at what I've been able to achieve and what I've been able to create has definitely given me a purpose. You know, I am now in a position so blessed and so happy that I get to help thousands of women all around the world see themselves in the same light. And as much as fitness is what I do now, this is my career, I have not forgotten about my love and my passion for fashion. And I always try to implement that in, you know, my fitness. And when it comes to just being creative and just being detailed and paying attention to the smallest colors, the smallest things, I always do that and if you watch my videos you would see that as well when it comes down to my workout clothes my hair my makeup my visuals where I film my videos how I film my videos how I edit I love just being creative and I get to express that in what I do so it's basically like the best of both worlds for me now fitness has taught me discipline fitness has given me structure and these are qualities that I probably would never have learned anywhere else. If you are on your fitness journey or if you're thinking about starting your fitness journey, my advice to you would be to always remember that results happen over time and not overnight. This is my third year into my fitness journey and there's still so much progress to be made and I'm very excited to see what my body can do. I know a lot of you will look at my pictures and my videos and go, oh my God, you're so perfect. I wish I looked like her. I am not perfect. I make mistakes. I slip up. I get lazy. I fall back into some bad habits. But that is not what matters. We're human beings, so we're bound to make mistakes. We're not robots. We're not machines. We're not battery operated. What matters is not whether or not you fail. What matters is how you get back up. Now, I take progress pictures all the time and I compare myself to myself. Okay, I don't compare myself to her or anyone else or anything else. I compare myself to myself. So don't compare yourself, don't compare your progress to anyone else. Compare your progress today to your progress tomorrow and vice versa. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. Also keep in mind that this journey is a very long journey. It's a difficult journey. It's gonna have ups, it's gonna have downs, you're gonna have highs, you're gonna have lows. And always love your body even at its worst, okay? So always stay motivated. 
and that concludes this video so i really really hope that i motivated you in one way or the other leave me some really nice comments down below and i'm gonna see you guys in my next video